Good day. You're listening to the Faith and Real Life podcast with Greg Wazinski and Millie Preble. Millie, you're, you're, uh, I love your new hairdo this week. It's, <laughs> it's looking good. You're changing it up. I do. Well, it is my camouflage hairdo because I did have a little mole removed. So A little surgery? A little surgery. Nothing mm. major. You know, they didn't take any brains out, did they? I hope not, because I don't have any to spare. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it's good to see you, and I like the new hairdo. I mean, every once in a while, you got to change things up. Got to. Got to change. Yeah. Well, and today, it's kind of appropriate, because we're talking about growth. And, uh, man, how about, like, during the coronavirus, people's hair growth was just out of control. Yeah, it was ridiculous. It was funny because as a hairdresser, I was looking around and noticing like, oh, I think you did something at home and know you're waiting. And <laughs> <laughs> so it was kind of interesting to watch the well, my son downward. asked My son asked me to cut his hair, right? You know, and, and I, I talk for a living. I don't cut hair. And so I did a little number two fade the best that I could with limited tools. And he really wanted to shave his whole head. But I was like, no, Let's just do a, like a number three and I'll fade in the two, you know, and I thought it looked good. Mm. And then, uh, after it was all over and we could finally go to the hairdresser, the barber, uh, he looked at it and he's like, who destroyed my previous work? (laughs) So I said, well, that's why we, that's why I think they're going to deem us essential. God forbid if we ever have to go through this again. I know. Right. And, And it's, it's funny that, you know, because I don't know. You just know, you know, the like, can you see it like from the previous? Oh, yeah. We can definitely tell. Oh, so don't uh, try to <laughs> fool your hairdresser. Yeah, do not. Because try this at home. if they uh, they'll they'll write you out uh, anyway. So here we are. We're talking about growth today. Um, you know, last episode we talked about not settling. And part of the next phase of personal development is, all right, if we decide that we're not going to settle, how do we begin to grow? And so I think it's a great topic, Millie, to, to think about that if we've decided to enter into a new level, uh, then I guess we have to grow up a little bit. Yeah, I know there's a saying I learned early on from one of my mentors that said all growth comes from outside the comfort zone. Ooh, outside the comfort zone. I like that. So if you're uncomfortable, you're growing. If you're comfortable, you're stuck. Well, and there's different stages of it too, right? And, and I think that one of the things that is most important when we're trying to have growth, I think so many people limit it to one area of their life. Mm-hmm. And if we're doing that, we struggle because something is missing. So mm-hmm. something is continuously stunting our growth So if you're going to do it for fitness reasons or you're Mm -hmm. going to do it in physical means, Mm -hmm. you also have to do it in personal and spiritual aspects Mm -hmm. as well. And so when you, you know, this first aspect of thinking about growth is really the whole person. Right. Right. I was when I was in uh, my former beauty world speaking, I used to do a class on goal setting. And so I did have uh, the whole list of, you know, personal, financial, relationship, family, faith, you know, all those different things. And it can be overwhelming. Change can always be overwhelming. So what I would ha- what I would do is I would have them break it down and to just, you know, find maybe your top three, right, your top three things you want to change. And then it's like, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. Yeah, right. right. So you take small action steps. I'm pretty sure you just called me fat. (laughs) Stop. (laughs) But you break down into doable small actions that move you forward. Right. So, and the key too is you you really have to do even one small thing every day to move you forward. Well, and it's it's the way that you look at it, right? So, right. So you you so what you're saying is that we need these basics to begin. Right. so that reminds me of when, we, you know, I was not a science guy, like totally not a science guy. I was going to college for acting. There was no reason that I needed biology or chemistry. Well, until, maybe chemistry. Well, until they said you need biology and chemistry to get into college. So I took them both in the same year, right? Mm. It, it, it didn't go well. But anyway, I do remember that a plant needs three things to grow. It needs light oxygen and water Mm -hmm. and without any of those three things uh not only may it not grow but it may die Mm -hmm. and i think that we need to look at ourselves the same way and and if we're going from the basics we know that what are the essential things that we need 
as an individual in order to grow? And also, um, what is it that we're willing to do to start at the basic level right. and to not expect miracles to happen overnight? Right, because even the smallest seed, when planted in the right soil and nurtured in the right environment with the right tools, it'll grow on its own. Right. And, and I think that, especially when it comes to our faith, that we have to be willing to grow because God has so much in store for us. God has this ability for us to always be growing, to always grow closer to him, but to also grow spiritually so that the people that we encounter and the people that we lead uh, will be fed. And, you know, I think that so many people get stuck in one place where they're comfortable. Mm -hmm. So you have two different types of people. You have people that are just comfortable, so they don't want to grow. Mm -hmm. And then you have another set of people who don't think that they're worthy to grow mm -hmm. or that they're always going to be stuck in a, in a single situation. Right. Well, that brings me to think about, you know, we put our own human limitations on our God. Mm -hmm. And one has nothing to do with the other. You know, once you take your limits off your God, there's no telling what can happen. Sure. And, and I love this uh, scripture. It's funny that you say that because the scripture that I pulled out for this week is from... Uh, 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 5 to 8. And it says this, it says, For this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness, and to goodness, knowledge, and to knowledge, self-control, and to self-control, perseverance, and to perseverance, godliness, and to godliness, mutual affection, and to mutual affection, love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So I love when you, you know, probably when you're listening to this, uh, you know, over the air or on the on your computer or whatever you're listening to this podcast on, you know, you're kind of like, well, where's it going to end? He keeps adding on. But it it's a process. Mm -hmm. It is the process to say, if you've discovered knowledge or you've discovered wisdom or you feel strong in perseverance, there's always another level that unlocks another door. Right. And I think, too, it's a great point because we have to be really completely honest with ourselves when we're looking at what's holding us back. Right. And when we look at our habits, you know, our habits are made up of the virtues that we have in our life. And virtues can be strengthened sure. through prayer. So... We know that we have to do this. We know that there are different levels. We know that we can either do it in our faith or our personal life. I believe you should do it in both. Um, so where do we begin? You know, I, I would say that to me, one of the things that I think so many people get stuck in is they look at the past and they think that that's what they're limited to. And I believe, and I know this for a fact, that all the greats will tell you, we have to learn from the past. We have to be the student who thinks about what got us into that situation. What did we need to learn from it? And if it was painful, then use it for good because there had to be some reason that it was so awful. But how do we begin to move forward? And, and I think that that's that first part of growth. Right. And, you know, it, there's a um, movie that back in the day we used to watch all the time with the kids called What About, what about Bill? Do you remember what that about movie? Bob? What about Bob? Yeah. And he, what they, about Bill? That's your husband. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going <laughs> to. Bill, what about you? <laughs> so, anyways, what about Bob? So, the, the point of the movie was he was going to this therapist and he had all sorts of issues. And so, the therapist told him to take baby steps. Baby steps. Um, I remember that. So, again, I think, you know, when we look at a change or we look at something that we think is unattainable, it gets overwhelming. So, what mm. do we do naturally? We shut down. Or we, you know, think we can't attain it or we're, I'm never going to be worthy. So, again, if we take these small habits and these baby steps, like I said, breaking it down into manageable chunks and manageable pieces that we start to put together right. that start to create that puzzle. And build on those scars. You know, if you have scars from the past, you have to begin to use them as the steps that move you forward because your story is amazing to so many people and again, uh, and I know that, you know, Millie, we, we have to not let our scars define us. And we do have to move on from them. But there has to be something that 
is good that comes out of it. Right. Well, it's the same, you know, we have to consider it all joy, Mm. you know, and if we do use those lessons, if we keep them to ourselves, that's not the point of our lesson, right? you know, and so hiding behind maybe something that's shameful or that was hurtful or painful, I think once we release it, it has no power over us anymore. Right. And and that also allows us to be open and vulnerable and be an example or a witness, um, you know, an inspiration maybe to others that say, you know, gosh, you know, here's someone that walked through a tough path and is on the other side of it. And I say it not to impress, but to impress upon you that, you know, it's possible. All things are possible. Through and that. I will say that there are a lot of people that talk about desiring growth and they're they want to know how to get to the next level, but yet they're not willing to put in the work. And so today we're going to commit to this aspect of growth. You know, like I said, last episode, we said, we're not going to settle. Okay. I get it. I have talents I have to use, but that first aspect of the next step is to grow inside. So, you know, let's talk a little bit about why that growth is so important Mm -hmm. because people feel comfortable where they are right? and not everybody's hurting. Not everybody's had something awful happen to them, but we're stagnant. Mm -hmm. And when we're stagnant, we begin to fall backwards a little bit. Mm -hmm. So some of the reasons that, that I would say why we need growth or, or what growth can do for us is number one, it helps us control anger. We have a very angry world right now. Mm. As a matter of fact, my pace, uh, my pace, my Facebook post the other day was, you know, it was like kind of like Ghostbusters too, you know, where that pink slime is going mm. on in the streets. That's what I feel like is going on in our world. We're at this phase of pandemic era where, oh, well, we all came together. It was great. Number two, uh, we feel better that we're starting to get to this point. Now it's comparing ourselves to what everybody else got financially or why can't I go there? And it, it, I mean, just people are so angry. Mm-hmm. And if we can grow with a situation, um, it allows us to to help stop some of that. Right. And I, I mean, it's my belief, too, that one of the greatest hindrances for growth is holding on to baggage. Mm. You know, I was just watching a, a video that was talking about, um, you know, do you want on your on your epitaph or your legacy to be, yeah, I followed all the rules, I made the managers look good, you know, I was compliant, It's or do you want to be a change agent? Do you want to be right. somebody that made a difference? So you have to really think about what is holding you back. And if it's baggage and you're trying to move forward with a backpack of you know rocks on your back with mm-hmm. all of your past mistakes or what you conceive are your past mistakes and your hurts and your pain, really difficult to move forward. Well, because you get into a cycle, right? I mean, you, you become your bad habits. Right. So by growing or by committing to grow, you're getting out of the things that weigh you down. Right. You have to make a conscious choice to say, I remember a really good friend of mine went through cancer years ago and she was really positive about it. We were gonna have a meeting and she set her agenda to make it to that meeting. And she said, I am not gonna be the girl that is defined by cancer. Mm. And I mean, that was from her attitude from the onset and she didn't, she's still alive and well and doing wonderful things. Well, then I would say in that aspect that, that the third key to that is to find joy with inside of our, you know, the aspect of growth helps us find joy in any situation. Mm -hmm. I'm always inspired by people that we see life stories about that take a situation like that, like you just talked about with cancer. And there's so much joy on their face. And uh, they just take their suffering and they make that into joy. And Mm -hmm. they're growing internally. Mm -hmm. At some point, you make the decision to say, I'm not going to let this hold me back. I, I already know that either A, a situation has uh, made me lose a part of my life that I can't control and it either threw me into depression or I allowed myself to become an addict or I allowed my job to control my world and I took it out on my family, whatever it might be, by committing to growth, we say, you know what? It is what it is. I'm moving forward and I am going to make sure that this never, ever happens again. And I I think a key aspect of that, too, you know, talking about addiction, there is a reason in the 12-step program that they invite you to ask your God or your maker, your creator, whoever that might be for you, 
to walk the journey with you so that you are never truly alone. And mm. I think we really do need to invite God into our plans and into our dreams and into our hopes because as our creator, he, he knows how much we're created for and is, you know, he's delighted in us when we really use the tools that he gave us and move forward. Well, and that's exactly right because you have these tools that he gives you. So by committing to grow and, and, and as you're listening, I, I want you to think about the aspects of your life that you really need to grow in. And I want you to think about what is it that's been holding you back from taking the next step into so many different areas. And, and, and when you commit to that, to growing, uh, not settling, now we're growing. When you commit to that, you begin to develop new skills that you never thought you had before. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you, you can read every self-help book in the world. You can watch every inspirational video that you want. Mm -hmm. But if you don't commit to developing new skills within yourself that work for you, <laughs> none of it is going to make any difference. Right. I used to joke that we don't need a motivational seminar. We need an implementation seminar. Yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, you do have to take all the things that you read, that you surround yourself with, and you have to develop a plan. You know, it's like any other strategy. If we want to, you know, do some financing on our house, we do the paperwork. If we want to, you know, change our diet, we, you know, there's a process through everything. But somehow I feel like through our own personal growth, we just sort of, you know, throw a few things on the wall and see if they stick. The old pasta theory, you know? Yeah. Well, and I'll say this. I'm not perfect at this. I, I mean, I, I'm a very thin skinned person. I mean, I try as I get older, I think I get, uh, you know, thicker skin, but for the last 11 years, my world in ministry has been about growing something for the glory of God. And I don't want it necessarily to beat about myself. Um, I know that seasons of friends come and go. I mean, there's just many things that have happened, but I'm always trying to grow so that I can be moldable by God to do what he's asked me to do. Mm -hmm. And I've had a lot of people try to take that growth away from me. Mm -hmm. And it's caused a lot of hurt for me personally. And there's been times when I've just said, why don't I just stop? Why don't I stop trying to grow and just coast and just settle in what I'm doing and just stay right where I'm at? And it's like God's message back to me is because that's not what I created you for. Right. And I think we have to be very careful about who we surround ourselves with mm. and our own inner demon that wants to tell us we're not worthy. I mean, you can see, I've seen, I can look back through several growth areas of my life and there were people, there were mentors at the time, there were people that I was like-minded with in that arena. And as we grow and develop, you know, not everybody's going on the same journey. And mm -hmm. so you can look at that as, you know, people that want to try and hold you back, or you can look at that as people that supported and lifted you to the next level. So there's nothing wrong with having to shift who you surround yourself with. Yeah, it's hard for me. It you is. You know, I when mean, you invest yeah. in people or people that you really want to approve of what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And here's the, here's the fact of the matter is, is that if you're growing spiritually and mentally and you're growing closer to God, you are going to hear things in prayer that nobody else is going to hear. Mm -hmm. And your growth is going to take you in a direction that other people will not understand. Right. And so for us, each and every day, we, ha we do have to think about who we can take on the journey with us. We do everything that we can to have them as somebody who will journey with us, somebody who will lift us up because we need people around us when we fall. Um, but we have to silence the critics. Mm -hmm. And that is what Millie's moment is about this week. Millie's minute uh, is about how do, we, uh, how do we focus on the prize at hand and uh, not listen to what's going on around us. So let's go, let's set up the timer, and we're gonna count down. Uh, you're getting so good at this. So we'll just go three, two, one. Once upon a time, there were a bunch of tiny frogs who arranged a race to reach the top of a tall tower. A crowd gathered to see the race and cheer on the contestants. The race began. No one in the crowd really believed any of the tiny frogs could make it to the top of the tower. They yelled, it's way too difficult. You'll never make it. Some of the frogs gave up. Still more yelling, it's too difficult, no one will make it. More gave up, but one continued higher and higher. This one just would not give up. At the end of a big effort, he reached the finally to the top of the tower, the only one. A contestant asked him, how did you do it? Turned out, this frog was deaf. He never heard all the negative comments that he couldn't do it. Don't listen to the naysayers. 
take your, that take your most wonderful dreams and wishes away from you. What you hear and read will affect your actions. Be deaf to what others may say and always think, God and I can do this together. Well, you did it in four seconds to spare. So you are you are within. I didn't even give give you a sign. It's just like you must practice this at home. Well, you know, it's funny. I did finally break down, and I googled how many words do you say in a minute. So, but, <laughs> so when I prepare, I no, try no, and stay wait, within that range. Here's but. the deal: during that whole minute, I wanted to grab like a blanket and sit down on the floor, like I was in. Uh, Miss Shupsky's kindergarten class over at St. <laughs> Peter and Paul and just listen for story Once time because time. like in my mind I'm picturing the uh cartoon you know Aesop's fables mm-hmm. used to have some or stuff the about the frogs frog. of Calaveras County right yeah right and I'm like <laughs> oh man what's gonna happen so um no I love that I love that story because <sighs> we do have to drown out the critics we do have to stay focused um listening to one voice the voice you can call within, I'll say that it is our Lord. Mm-hmm. And that is who we need to please. Yeah. And we have to grow. And what is that tallest tower? Mm-hmm. What is it that we're trying to do? I'm sure that there were other floors that were very comfortable. That and the there frogs, were others that tried to reach the same thing. But they listened to the people around them. Mm-hmm. And so we can't let other people stunt our growth. Mm-hmm. You know, that is one of the dangers that we will be faced with when we commit to do anything. It's hard enough to motivate ourselves Mm -hmm. and then also to try to please everybody else. Right. And we're here to please our God. Mm. We have to remember that. And, you know, when we start to listen to the negative Noras, I mean, they may be family members and maybe loved ones. And we, you know, we don't have to eliminate them, but we have to decide who is going to be our cheerleaders. You know, who are we going to allow into that space of sharing our dreams with? You know, not you don't want to be naive and, you know, have something that's a crazy idea and not listen to reason. But I think if you've discerned and you've prayed and you really feel like you've listened to the voice of God and you've worked and nourished your gifts, uh, I I think that you really have to listen to him and him alone. Well, out of all that, I'm just curious, who's negative Nora? I always heard a negative (laughs) Nellie. Did you, did you have someone in your life named Nora? Well, no, no, it's not, you know, I don't know anybody (laughs) named Nora, but but we all have that, we all have that person and it's not, it doesn't make them a bad person. You know, it doesn't mean that we cut them out of our life. We just, you know, I, we talked earlier about inner and outer circle right? and we have to remember that, you know, who we surround ourselves with is who we become more like. Um, we are the sum of the five people that we surround ourselves with. And we have to be careful who those five people are because it, we can very quickly go to, you know what, they're right. I am not worthy. I don't know who I think I am. I right. don't have the skill set. And I can tell you from experience, there have been so many things that I had the opportunity to do that I had no idea how to do. Mm. And I said yes before I could change my mind. And along the way, I figured out how to do it. And that's beautiful because... I think that we can make ourselves accountable by telling others and selling our story to others. Not that we're trying to to share in a lie or that we're trying to share in something that is so wacky that we just want other people to go along with us, but Mm -hmm. why am I making this change? Why Mm -hmm. am I growing? And if you love me, you, excuse me, you'll see the passion Mm -hmm. in my face. You'll, Mm -hmm. you'll hear, you have to take all of me. Mm-hmm. the good and the bad. Mm-hmm. But if I keep telling you my story and I keep telling you it's of God and you still keep giving me pushback, then I need to think about who you are in my life. Mm-hmm. So, but we also inspire other people that mm-hmm. way too, that there are going to be people that say, you know what? I never thought I could do it. And, mm-hmm. and by telling your story, mm-hmm. number one, it makes you accountable to you. Number two, you inspire other mm-hmm. people. Mm-hmm. And number three, you begin to find out who are the people that are in your corner? Right. And if you're very lucky and very blessed, like I am, you have a mate that tells you every day that they believe in you. So it's important. I mean, even if we don't have that person that's a mate, it's important to have that one true friend that can tell you, I believe in you. I love those words. I believe in you. That's like one of the greatest things you could say to somebody. You look them in the eye. Absolutely. Because how many times we have our own inner doubts and our own inner fears. And I remember when you asked me to start Coffee and Conversation, I was 
very like, oh, I couldn't do that. But I, d- you know, again, I just was, I said, yes, you know, first, well, first I said no, but then I said, you know, yeah, I can do this. <laughs> but, but again, we, it's about stepping out of that comfort zone. And, and I say, think I texted you, I believe in you. Yeah. Yeah. You're another one. So, so it is, it's, it's important, especially when we can, when, and we can be that for others. We can see someone in a way that they can't see themselves Mm -hmm. and we can be that encourager and we can be that person that lifts them up and then and then hold each other accountable it's great to have an accountability partner that'll be brutally honest but loving and supportive as well and on the flip side reward yourself for the small victories right when you when you you reach another stage when you take that baby step right um when you uh get to the point where you look and you say Oh my gosh. Yeah. I climbed another floor just like the frog. Right. Like it's okay. It doesn't mean that you stop and have a party for weeks, right. but you know what? Tonight, yeah. I'm going to enjoy this moment. Yeah. I was watching a video earlier on uh, this gentleman that is a behavior scientist and he was talking about changing and creating new habits and he says we have to give ourselves, you know, a small like of acknowledgement victory. So he's like you can just say Awesome, or you can do a happy dance, or you you know figure your own thing out. But it was so adorable that That's he just cool. you know you, he and he broke down everything into these small habits and how you tag it in onto something that you're already doing, but in a positive way. And each time, awesome, you know, just really it. very cute. And you get excited about wanting to say that. I mean, you get excited that no matter how silly it is, you know, whether it's coloring a circle on a workout chart or whether it's doing something that you grow, it's like there's, there's power in that. Those are sustainable ways to make changes happen. Even uh, there was another scientist I was listening to and she said, you know, one of the things is, is, you know, we need instant gratification, even Mm. if it's in a small way to want us to keep going. So just those small things that you do for yourself really change your mindset in that you know you you think sometimes I'm only going to get the reward at the very end and that's it's hard to do that long haul so when we do take those times to reward ourselves and encourage ourselves and be that encouragement for others it really helps us move along the way well in any of these keys that as you're listening in they might be the, the missing link some of them you might do really well some of them you may have never thought about and some of you are looking for the place to start but I can tell you that it's it's a process mm. and so you know we'd like to give you a couple tips before uh we leave you today but what can we do uh to number one to grow and and so my first uh thing i'm actually going to put two together because i think they go well together number one is to uh be creative and the second aspect of that is don't limit yourself so be creative about your growth. What is it that you dream as possible? I say it and I'll say it as often as I can, as many shows as I can. Dream. You know, so be creative, but don't limit yourself. If you have that goal, if you want to grow and to be somebody new or to grow and um, to just try to get back to who God made you to be, don't limit yourself. So that, that's my first point, those two. Be creative and don't limit yourself. Well, and I think something that's also important is to take time to think and read. Mm. You know, so many times we're just checking off our to-do list and we rush through days. And again, we need to take that time to think dream and to read you know read about other successes read about a tool that you don't have yet that if you knew better you could do better right so you know that's another thing it's going to be the bill episode this but but that's one of the things i really admire about him is you know he'll just be sitting quiet meditation i said like, what are you doing i'm thinking you know we're going to have to have bill as a guest yeah. <laughs> that's coming up bill uh i know the you're bill watching show. yeah so uh we're just going to call it but it's bill. but it's amazing when you think about the change that happens when people actually do that and take the time to do that. Right. Well, and that goes along with what I was going to say is that we always have to be teachable. When we stop being, being a learner, when we stop being open to being taught something, we become an ego driven maniac who nobody wants to be around. Mm -hmm. And chances are you'll never grow again. If you ever stop being teachable, Mm -hmm. You can no longer grow. The world changes. The needs change. Your friends change. Everything changes. Mm -hmm. And if you stop learning, if you stop being a learner, you will get passed by instantly by everybody else. But secondly, it will stunt any amount of growth that you think you can attain. Right. And I think we have to be 
cognizant of our beliefs and some of the things that we've endured in the past. I know the only way to really improve is through constructive criticism. Right. And I think sometimes, you know, we initially look at constructive criticism as something negative and I did something wrong. But if we can be mature about it and really open our hearts to mm. how can this constructive criticism help me grow? Um, I'm working on some writing right now and I asked a friend of mine to read over and she's like, do you want my feedback? I said, yes, I do. And oh, I, of course man. I braced myself and she had some great points. And uh, some of them, you know, one were like, you know, you need to have more descriptive actions. In the Still makes me want to grab a bottle of vodka. I don't yeah. care who's talking about stuff. <laughs> You write, but, you, you pour your heart out, and you're defended, like, look at this. Of course, I defended myself and said, you know, I'm going to add that later, which is true. I yeah. mean, I do, you do, sometimes when you're writing, you just want to spill out the words on the page, and then in editing, you go back. I call back it puking and, on a page. Yeah, you go back and add the, you know, the ambiance and the scene, and you set the stage. Um, but it was good. I mean, I did take notes on what she said, and I am going to open it up to other people, and I really do want feedback because I think you get to a point when – you're mature in life to understand, you know, yes, there are going to be people that want to criticize you to tear you down, but you have to be able to discern the difference. Right. And if that's the case, then, you know, it's like anything. If it's valuable, keep it. If it's not, throw it out. Right. And that goes along with your bad habits. You know, that's that's the final point is that we need to get rid of those bad habits. We need to get rid of the things that hold us back. And we don't even necessarily know that they're bad habits. You know, whether it's staring at your iPhone too long or whether it's watching the news and allowing it to define you or whatever that moment is. Many of the things that we criticize young people for these days, we all collectively have something that we do that's a bad habit that stops our growth and pigeonholes us into what society tells us we should do. Mm -hmm. And so my friends, I would tell you that growth is such an essential aspect for you to find joy, for you to grow closer to Christ, for you to do all the different things within your world that will bring about a happiness and a fullness that you really, really desire. It's about shunning the things that hold you back, understanding where you can possibly go, and then committing to the growth process and drowning out everybody in the past. And and that's really what we all need to do together, be that lifelong learner. Um, so Millie, uh, before we uh, get ready to go, any, any final thought that you want to give? I think uh, a quote that I heard is, you can either suffer the pain of discipline now or suffer the pain of regret later. Mm. Up Why to you. you stare at me when you say <laughs> that? Like, man, I'm going in like Forrest Gump. I don't want any regrets. If I want to run, I'm going to run. And I won't even know why. So, uh, my friends, we uh, will continue to pray for you. We'll continue to think about uh, how we can continue to grow even in our show and and the ways that we lead you to a good, healthy, happy, and holy life and bring faith and real life together. So I would like to thank our sponsor, the Jess and Lilia Gifts from Above Foundation, uh, who I am just so grateful for. And we continue to honor the lives of Jess and Lilia um, who, you know, Jess is saying was that there are so many beautiful reasons to be happy. Mm. And I think about that with growth. So uh, grow, because not everybody continues to have that chance. And Amen. so we thank, uh, we thank that foundation for our sponsor. And if you'd like to learn more about the ministry or listen to other episodes of the Faith and Real Life podcast, you can go to our website at faithandreallife.com. And if you want to hear more about what Millie has to say, you can go on her Facebook page and just uh, do that little magnifying glass thing and look up Millie Preble and you'll find her. And she has always uh, some great tips on there too. And uh, she always needs a new friend. So God bless you. God keep you. Until we meet again, uh, we will pray that God meets you everywhere that you desire him always.